nailed him. Big snake egg, big snake egg, big snake egg. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Holy smokes. Now to get him out of the water. Complete monster. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We got him, monster. Oh my God. And look at this, barely got him. Look at that fish, dude. Oh my God. All right, finally got this arrow untwisted here. I got the tip off, but look, it's hanging on just by a thread of skin. I got so lucky. And holy cow, look at this. I've had my tips bent before, but I don't know if you guys can see my arrow tip. It is completely the other way, <laughs> the opposite way. So now I know what happened. I accidentally hit him in this really, really tough part of his head. And this is a straight bony structure right here. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear that. So I probably hit him right here by accident and it slid backwards and got into his shoulder like that. So I got real lucky even landing this fish. But look at this fish. This is a bullseye snakehead, not a northern snakehead. And it's a bullseye because of this little bullseye mark close to the tail back here. They are beautiful fish, I will give you that, but they are highly invasive down here in South Florida. And they used to be only in the Broward County area, but now they're here in the Miami-Dade, all the way up through Broward County to the Palm Beach County region where I live now. And this fish is a stud. I mean, that is a stud snakehead. They eat baby ducks, baby turtles, all the fish. They are have no natural predators, nothing eats them. So they're taking over our canal system and it's recommended by the FWC that you do not release them back into the waters. They can even live on land for hours air breathing. They're just a wild creature. But let's quickly get a uh, measurement on this fish. I'm really curious to see how big he is. Ran to the house real quick to get my ruler. Let's check it out. He is just over 32 and a half inches long. That is a really nice fish for this area. One of the biggest ones I have ever seen. It's so cool to capture that all on camera. Pounds. Looks like he's just over seven. Seven pound fish. I thought he was gonna be closer to 10. Either way, stud fish guys. You never know what I'm gonna catch in my backyard canal system down here in South Florida. Awesome. Nice job though, Sizzle, shooting that bull's ass snakehead. She's been shooting everything in the backyard like crazy. Yeah. And uh, she was seeing, you know, we live on this freshwater canal system and I, 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 we literally, I must be the stupidest fisherman in the whole wide world because I literally have a dock. I moved here to go water skiing, okay, <laughs> and have a bulkhead, which needs work, but we're on the water yes. and we're in this beautiful lake and we can catch a million fish on here. And I don't know if you saw the, I saw the video yet, but we just did a whole freshwater video because we've been seeing so many fish out here that we decided to go do a freshwater right. photo shoot. It prompted for Darcy's, us to get out there. Yeah, for Darcy's calendar. And we, we caught some more snakeheads on the frogs this time, so it was so much fun. And yes. Darcy shot this one, which I, we just showed you. Yes. So we decided to do a Captain Cook, because we posted that shot on Facebook, and everybody's like, what's it taste like? What's yeah. it taste like? How do you cook it? Right. How do you clean it? So we're bringing that content to you right now. Yes. So this is a different snakehead. Not the one that I shot with a bow and arrow. Yes, different. Top water, a top water frog yeah, top water on this snakehead. guy. Here's the hookups or whatever. Yeah. And um, let's oh. go. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> All right, so like Brian said, we're making, we're doing uh, prepping for the calendar. So we're doing bikini photo shoots, I guess you could say, for the calendar. But those are now available pre-order, fresh water and salt water available down below in the description, as well as, sorry, I'm gonna sound on repeat, but there's all kinds of awesome stuff there. Autographed eight by tens. We got uh, sterling silver pendants, a wide variety. This is a largemouth bass pendant, as well as tons of cool different saltwater species. We have fish hook and anchor bracelets wearing the fish hooks today. Adult and child sizes available. The necklaces and the bracelets are unisex, so you don't have to ask me that. Anybody can wear them, guys. Doesn't matter your and age. Apparel and eight by 10 signed. Correct. Calendars are signed, all that stuff. Correct, all right, yes. Do it. You'll, you'll see that all down below, but if you wanna support my small business, click down the links down in the description. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm about to become Santa Claus. So until then, <laughs> let's dive right into this. This is a nice chunky snakehead that ate a topwater frog in the middle of the day. 
and uh, this fish was flipping around like crazy and he actually like broke one of my fingernails pretty good when he flipped. <laughs> so I always have these problems. I can never keep. You don't have any fingernails. I can never keep any nails anyways. They only get to a certain length and then they break. So I had a nice nail there, but it's broken now. Anyhow, <laughs> no, 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 nobody matters, cares about that because we don't, I don't paint my nails or whatever. And Brian will tell you about my hands. So that's a different story. Okay. Let's... Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> All right, well, let's dive into this. <laughs> we got my six and my eight inch star sizzle fillet knife today. We're using the six inch. And let me just show you how crazy scaly these fish are. And you saw me in the video talking about that wild head and structure here. So you're only going to be able to cut so far into the head. So at an angle, insert your knife behind that peck fin, turn it around, and then go all the way into the head as far as you possibly can. But again, you're going to be stopped by this bony structure right here. So now that I'm there, turn the blade around and you just see that this sharp knife is just slicing right through these scales. And tough scales, thick scales in general, are just going to dull your blade quicker over time. That's just part of the deal when you cut through bones and scales and stuff like this. So I will definitely sharpen this blade after pulling in this fish, that's for sure. But it is very sharp at the moment. Go through the tail. Ooh, I'm splitting the tail in half. Oh well, sometimes that happens. That's cool. All right. Nice, that's how you make a split, split tail mullet. Correct, and people actually troll these or use these snake heads for deep water sword fishing, which is pretty cool. I dare you to make that into a bait we can troll tomorrow. Well, we can't because we're eating it. Yeah, we're not gonna eat the tail, you're gonna skin it. I know, should I leave some meat on the skin? No, just, just a yeah, little bit, yeah. Let's try that. Yeah, right. check it out. Anyhow, let's try it. all right, we'll maybe try it. Because we're eating it, so when you, make a, the skin. when you make a strip, you gotta leave a quarter of the inch of the meat on. It's okay, it's a snake head. It's not like a True. <laughs> hermit. Good point. <laughs> All right, so sliding it down. So this fish unfortunately died before I was able to um, bleed him out, but I don't think that's an issue at all. I mean, I prefer to bleed a fish out, but it is what it is. And let's see here. I'm just gonna start at the tail section and work that back, and then I'll show you why we're doing it this way because um, this fish is just so oddly shaped. They have a swim bladder that goes all the way back here. You see that cavity? I actually just, just opened that yeah. up by accident. But there's a cavity that goes all the way down the length of the fish, which is why they can air breathe out of the water for so long. Now, like that big snakehead I shot in this video, you know, people asked, is he gonna, is he, uh, did he live for hours out of the water? Well, he had like a pretty fatal injury, so <laughs> he died pretty quickly. Um, but if they're caught on like a topwater frog, then the fish will live for hours out of the water. But, you know, we play with our fish and make content and stuff. Right. So, so by the time we're done playing with it, it's dead. Yeah, so this guy did not survive. <laughs> Anyhow, so now that we've got that part filleted off, I got right on those bones, right where the air bladder is, all the way down. And then up here, there's pin bones. But the shape of this rib cage is pretty wild. It's like perpendicular to the fish, like straight out. So watch what I do. I go put my blade in there, and then I'm literally turning my blade at like a straight angle this way instead of down. So straight out, and you slab it like this because this, the bones, rib cage bones, stick straight out. See that? Like that's all bones in here. Now that I did that, now I'm gonna cut back down we really prefer not to open up his innards if possible. And I know you guys are going to ask me about like our freshwater canal system here. There we go. Perfect. Do you nice. see what I mean? Like that, that's yeah, that all is. bones right here. It's super bony structure. So you just go straight and then down and cut that off. So we did a pretty good job there. But eating fish out of our freshwater canal system. Now, I really wouldn't recommend it to do it on a regular basis because I certainly don't. But again, I've eaten all kinds of fish out of my canal. Uh, I've eaten peacock bass, sunshine bass, snakeheads. I've eaten tilapia before. So there's definitely, I'll definitely eat them. And the government, right, the FWC or the government down here yeah. says, go ahead, Brian. Right. Yeah, guys, you can, I, we get this question on Facebook a lot, but you can just Google up your, the health department in your state, particularly in Florida, it lists like practically every single body of water, like fresh water, and it'll tell you, you know, you can have two pieces, you know, two fish twice a week or whatever. Yeah. And like pregnant women, maybe once a week. Yes. But, um, so, you know, cause all kinds of runoff in there and everything else. Yes. But, uh, but you know, we have it once or twice a year, once a quarter maybe, so. Yeah. You know, whatever, just, just like anything else, 
moderation, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So again, we're going to eat this up tonight, no problems whatsoever. But again, you know, just to take that precaution to yourself. Decide to eat them or did not decide to eat them. There's not medical Kill advice. Kill them and use them or <laughs> eat them, whatever it is. So Leave me some skin on the So I think I'm just going to start a little back here so we can leave some skin on it. Like, because I've got this here. Where but we're going to try to make a strip bait out of it for deep sea fishing. We'll see what happens. So instead of starting right back here at the tail, I'm going to start here because I'm trying to save some of the skin to do that. that should be good. All right, now I'm gonna start angling down and getting right on the skin here. It's gonna be very tough to cut through a snakehead skin because again, they're just so crazy thick. They live right on the shorelines. They love to ambush stuff. So they're always up against the rocks and the structure and all kinds of crazy cool. stuff. So they need looks, that. It does look good. It looks excellent. There's no weird growths on it. I don't see anything in the meat as far as I know right now. And um, yeah, Brian's saying about deformities on fish. I actually saw a salapia today that is literally can't see. Like one of his eyeballs was like completely deformed. Like he was sitting there and a duck swam on top of him and he didn't even move. And I'm like, I bet you that fish is blind. He, no, shot he him. felt the duck, you goofball. I guarantee it. Shot he him. You can feel the wave. Shot the fish, he came off my bow and shot him again because he was so dumb and he like couldn't see anything. So some of these fish definitely have some weird growth. That is for sure. Or he was oddly. Those are all your misses. No, the fish was oddly like skinny too. He just like like wasn't, me. He wasn't healthy fish. Like me, skinny like me. You're healthy. He wasn't. He wasn't healthy. All right, he let's looked go. Awful. So Not there we that. go. You get the, got that whole fillet off. We're gonna do the other side of this fish. Already knocked out another snakehead earlier. So we are gonna eat some good eats tonight. So stay tuned for what co cooking we put in's got in the kitchen for us, and uh, we'll be right back. Are you ready to sizzle? I'm ready. All right. All right, guys. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin'. This is the taco and land shark edition. Let's do it. So, well, I'm going to tell them how we may prepare the tacos oh, first. Oh, sizzle. Sorry. She's eagerly like drinking. You know how these Florida girls are. So anyway, we made tacos out of it because I like to fry most freshwater fish. Let's, let's, be, let's be real, OK? And it's just, it's just a snakehead, OK? It's not permanent like we had last time. So I, uh, she's just diving right in. So anyway. So I, I did this, your classic uh, flour and egg dredge and then into a mix of breadcrumbs. And I just add a bunch of different spices and Tupperware and mix it up good until I think it tastes great uh, for that day. And then, you know, I fried them up in the uh, pan. Make sure you check the temperature on that oil in that pan. I use peanut oil. I use the oven uh, thermometer, like the one you'd stick in a pot roast or something. It was a little hot, so it was a little hot. But uh, two or three minutes, it came out wonderful. And we're just doing simple tacos. I'm, I'm using uh, whole wheat and keto wraps. I like to put them in a pan, heat them up a little bit of butter, make them delicious. And we got we went to the local market. Fresh market. Local fresh market. And we got fresh guacamole and this fresh, delicious salsa. So we got some homegrown ingredients. We should use my pineapple. Oh, oh we well. should use your pineapple. You know, right here down Darcy's garden has pineapple and uh, what else we got? All kinds of goodies. Bananas and tomatoes and all kinds Roses, of stuff. Roses, herbs. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Darcy already tried it. It's delicious. <laughs> Super good. It's really good. I'll tell you, I got the B-roll, cut one in half. It's delicious white meat in there. Excellent. Yeah, it looks a little bit like a turd, but <laughs> I mean, the white, oh, it's like, my God, but there's white meat. I, I had one just like this, like a fish stick. Super good. Very good. And you guys know sometimes we cook some sort of kind of questionable crap around here. You can tell from Darcy's face, it's not that great right away. <laughs> She's not Meryl Streep. He was making a face like this wasn't good. I was like, what no, is good. he doing it's over here? It's really good. It's excellent. It's very good. I'm going to scarf this down right yeah. now. And we're gonna, I'm going to make another that. one. I'm going to sound so, like a uh, pig stuck in the mud, as my dad would say. <laughs> That's what Tim would say. So until next time. Follow your dreams and keep on catching. And don't forget to have a lunch. Oh, cheers. Thanks to our Mine sponsor, Landshark. Mine is almost empty. That's typical. <laughs>